You're listening to Five Things with Lisa Birnbach. Hi, I'm Lisa Birnbach. I'm back home in New York. You can see my books. You've seen this background maybe once or twice before. Why am I telling you this? Because today's guest is Claude Taylor, co-founder of the Room Raider Twitter site, which rates all the backgrounds of all the pundits who appear from their houses and gives them constructive advice. Buy a plant. Move your head. I don't know. Move your plant. Anyway, I recorded this interview with Claude when I was in California. You'll see a different background if you decide you want to watch this interview instead of listen to it. It's on Lisa Birnbach channel on YouTube. I, you know, I, it's, it's a little different for me because when I do Zooms, I usually um, am only talking to a close friend or two and uh, they don't mind if they see me in bed hair and pajamas. I, I, I want you to know I made a little effort. Anyway, Claude Taylor is our guest. And the background that you will see was our wonderful rented house in California. And this is New York. And here we are ready to begin. So I'm home after a month long trip to California to see my exhibits. And even though I've only been home two days, I miss them like crazy. Yes, I have FaceTimed them. Yes, exhibit A and B and the baby of course, have FaceTimed with them already. My partner misses the life in California, the slower days, the uh, swimming pool, the bigger space. I I mean, I, I don't dislike any of those things, but I'm happy to be back in New York where we have real sidewalks on both sides of the street, where everyone I see in our neighborhood wears a mask. I only went for a walk. I'm still quarantining. Don't worry. And where I found my blow dryer. Hmm. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm back in my office, which for me means business. You know, in LA, I'm sorry to say, I didn't know what day it was. Uh, Each day blurred into the next. I felt like I was on vacation, even though I wasn't. It was kind of a, a vacation. What was it? It was, what would it be like to live in California near the exhibits and spend time with them? Be apprised, I have an exhibit in New York, and it would be hell to leave her. So I'm not doing anything so fast. But the days blurred. I had a list of things I wanted to accomplish, and I didn't do them. I had some things we did accomplish, and what was really well, it, it was just great. It was just great to have a change of pace because, you know, I felt enclosed in this apartment for five or six months, who's counting, and it was nice to have grass and a yard and, and to be outside even if we weren't uh, communing with others. Now, I have bills to pay, mail to open, um, and to be quite honest, This podcast, which is meant to sort of raise our collective level of optimism, it's going to be very hard this week. The loss of Ruth Bader Ginsburg right now is inestimable. The hypocrisy that we're all watching from the GOP is sickening. And all the news that's slithering out of Washington is is sickening. But you know what? I feel maybe not optimistic today, but I feel grateful. And that's that's good. That's if that's the best I can do, that's that's good enough, you know? Think about it. Think about it how think about how that translates into your life. So Claude Taylor is coming up. He's a resistor, but first here are my five things of the week. Okay, number one was our residency for a month in California. And I want to thank my partner who enabled this to happen. It was important for me to see my children and my 
grandchild. Uh, it was wonderful. We quarantined for a week, then we got tested, then we just dove in. And I have to say, it was after those first COVID tests that we had that I was able to hug my children. Hugging. It's the thing I miss the most. And those were good hugs. Uh, we had a chance to go swimming with our little grandson. He's not little, he's young, but he's very large. And I could only lift him in the pool. And swimming with a giggling baby is a joy I did not know. Number two, we had four distance meals at friends' yards. And I want to apologize retroactively for bad manners. I think my social skills are really rusty. And I want to apologize to them for possibly eating with my mouth open, talking while eating, interrupting, interrupting while eating, or anything else. I was just so completely excited to be with people across a table, across a garden. I think I was maybe shrill and hysterical, but thank you for those meals. Number three, the baby. He just never stops moving. He's like a, 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 a firefly trapped in a jar. Boo, 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 boo. Uh, I get why my son and daughter-in-law are tired all the time. I really do. And how can you be mad at him? Because he's smiling and he falls and he giggles and he's silly. And But he opens every drawer. He turns every knob. It's, it's not like my son who sat on my lap and let me read to him. I mean, he lets you read to him, but like a page. Number four, our residency, as it were, overlapped with my birthday. And unlike so many people this year who've had a shitty quarantine birthday, there I said it, I had a good one because I was with most of my kids. So grateful, grateful, really grateful. Number five, the beach. I was on the beach. You know how much I love the beach. I was on the beach for one day this entire year. 2020, what a bad, stupid, dumb year, horrible, nasty, wicked year. And I was on the beach for one day. It was on this past Monday. It was a perfect day in Santa Monica. Uh, I was just so happy and grateful to be there. Maybe if we go back to California for another month, I'll go to the beach twice. Who knows? The mind boggles. Coming up, Claude Taylor. Don't go away. Welcome. It's Lisa Birnbach, and this particular interview with Claude Taylor is going to be on Zoom. You can see it, and there is a reason for it. It's not vanity. It's because Claude and his fiance have created the Room Raider, the diabolical Twitter site that rates the backgrounds of every talking head who is now stuck at home. And Claude Taylor is also the founder of Mad Dog Pack, a political action committee, which was formed in 2018 to fight back the lying, verminy, disgusting, dishonorable stuff that was happening in Washington. And I'm so glad to meet you. Welcome. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Claude, there's a place for anger and pushback. In 2018, you, I went about it by starting this podcast. You went about it by deciding you had to develop public installations uh, uh, refuting or, or talking about the caliber of person Donald Trump was. How did that come about? You know, it just sort of started. Uh, 
we were looking for, I was looking for a way to sort of express myself on a, on a political and a public stage, sort of. Uh, uh, it is part political expression. It is sort of part uh, uh, performance, political performance art of, mm -hmm. of, a, of a form. Um, it, in our case, it took the sh uh, shape of uh, large billboards um, that sometimes were a little bit uh, tongue and cheeky, a little bit edgy, um, a little bit different. Uh, uh, we started off by putting a, a Matt Gates's DUI photo on a billboard <laughs> uh, in his district. Uh, I'm fairly certain we're the first uh, uh, organization to do that. Uh, we have a 14 foot uh, inflatable rat that we towed around um, Mar-a-Lago. Uh, last, last January, we put up a, a dump Trump billboard uh, on a boat in front of Mar-a-Lago. Oh, nice. Uh, just sort of a temporary uh, exhibition uh, of, our, of our protest. Um, that's the sort of thing that we do. There's a big focus on the billboards. We have a series of uh, what we call Trump death count billboards that is updated regularly and, and mm -hmm. graphically shows the uh, the number of, of uh, deaths that have resulted in, uh, from Trump's uh, mishandling of the crisis. And right now we're up to 195,000. Well, yes, as one would have to. Um, how many of you were involved in this, and how did you? You, I should say that you, in addition to accepting donations, you also sell very very good merch that helps uh, support your effort. Yeah, you know, the, the merch itself is a sort of a form of expression. We have a lot of fun with the merch. I think I think if you look at maddogpack.com, if you, if you look at our, our catalog, uh, we have, a, I think, a number of ways of uh, expressing our outrage mm -hmm. um, or our sentiments. Um, uh, and... So I think we sort of take uh, take the merch to another level beyond the normal T-shirts and coffee cups. So I bought uh, the I bought the um, uh, baby board book, for example, because yeah. you know I have a well, my son has a baby. It's not yes. my baby. I like to yeah, think that was, of him that as was mine. a delightful product. Uh, a uh, delightful uh, product. An, an author approached us and uh, uh, who, who created this ABCs for for kind of resist your babies and, and uh, it, it, it was exceptionally well done mm -hmm. and it was, a, it was just a good concept, uh, a good concept very well. Performed. Executed, yeah. Um, how many people are involved in Mad Dog Pack? How do you, uh, you're very nimble, you can move that rat from here to there anytime and you do have a roving billboard truck which is really cool. We do that. The, the roving billboard truck is sort of our big, you know, if we're a small organization, it's uh, myself and a, a, my deputy principally. Um, there's a few other people who are involved sort of, uh, you know, uh, part, on a part-time basis. There's a, a core of five or six of us who do graphics, who do help with the billboards, um, uh, who do uh, help drive the rat around. We have a small team. Uh, <laughs> Half a dozen who are kind of like who really who are principally involved, um, uh, but that's about it. Um, I think I think what I'm hearing is that the outrage, the anger, and the passion for what you're doing can make three people have the power of twenty. I mean, in a way, don't you think? It's like the little well, Hanukkah story that the Jewish people tell every year. You know, there was only enough oil for one night to light the menorah, but it turned into eight nights. Hence, Mad Dog Pack. We try. We try to leverage the uh, uh, our visuals. Uh, you know, I was very pleased. We have a huge billboard truck. Uh, as far as I know, we're the first political organization uh, to buy its own billboard truck. It's typically something, something usually that's rented by the day or by the week by organizations, but we actually have one, so we switch the artwork to every two weeks. Um, but we had one uh, which was uh, very simple. It just 
huge black, a huge black field with white letters that just says loser. <laughs> yes. Um, and we were able to park the billboard truck along his motorcade route. And so he, his entire he had to see it. Yeah. You know, passed within six or eight feet of the billboard truck. So I, I was very pleased with that. No, oh, I uh, would be too. Claude, who, on a day to day basis, is your anger um, really focused on Trump or? How about his enablers? How about oh, McConnell? Very, How about Jared? How do you feel about Jared? I don't have a very high opinion of slumlord Jared. Uh, uh, he, all of these people will, ha will have their place in history, um, and it'll be at the bottom of a well of crime and deceit um, and corruption and filth. And, and Jared and Ivaka are, are chief among them. His enablers, the Mitch McConnells, uh, and and that you know the the Jim Jordans, the Devin Nunes, uh, people of that ilk, um, they will be condemned to the ash heap of history. Well, but what right if, now, what, right but, now, focus on getting Trump out. But. Well, yes, the the idea is getting Trump out, but here's the deal. Of course, we know that Trump is going to. Trump and his, not only his enablers, and I hope there's a special place in hell for Bill Barr, but but his followers, his base, they're going to take to the street. They have guns. I mean, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I don't think it's just Trump. I mean, obviously, it's not just Trump. But well, I, when, I'm scared, I Claude. Think I'm really scared. I think a lot of it depends on how 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 large uh, Joe Biden's victory is. You know, if it's if it's like a very very close on election night, um, um, there's going to be problems. If, on the other hand, it's a, a significant um, electoral college lead as well as a popular vote lead, that will help a lot in terms of tamping down. Um, any of the bad stuff that, that may happen. But honestly, it could go either way. You know, I, you know how close is it? It's, it's, you know, right now, certainly Biden seems to have the advantage in a number of states, and it's, you know, but, you know, we've all been here before, so yeah. you know, not, not, none of us are counting chickens, right? So Correct. So, you know, we got to win by five. My, my belief is that we got to win by five points. Right. You know, and that will that will get, that will put us ahead in them in, in enough states that it, it won't it won't be terribly close. And perhaps the the brave women and men of the military might just have to remove uh, Mr. Bonespur. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I I don't think we really know exactly. How it will play out? We, we've never we've never been here before. I no. mean, anyone who says they know what's going to happen um, on November third, or as a result of November third, mm -hmm. on, on the fourth, the fifth, you know, later, you know, I mean, I think everyone keeps saying that it's not about election night; it's about election month. Right. And, you know, and both sides have, you know, so far, both sides are mostly armed with lawyers, um, and there are plenty of those in play. Um, the I, I'm less worried about the individuals expressing um, evil intent, and and honestly, there may be some on both sides. Uh, I think the, we're obviously more concerned with the ones who are have a propensity towards uh, you know they have uh, um, probably larger arsenals than your average bear, right? Um, and those people are of particular concern, but I don't think they're going to be. Uh, I think they can be uh, handled um, with by law enforcement, and um, you know that, that gets pretty serious pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. Since Trump has become president, he has he has occupied us in a way that has is unprecedented. A lot of us have had trouble concentrating on other things 
moving ahead professionally or personally or just loss of attention span because you're doing something and then your phone dings, there's a new alert and something dreadful has happened or something that makes you angry has happened or the post office is trying to be, you know, whatever it is. One thing that I can't even remember is what it was like to have time and serenity and peace of mind before this um, crooked regime came in. So, for example, the idea that our time won't be taken up with this, like I could have a new career, so could you. Mm-hmm. What, what would you do? I mean, you'll still be room rating because I think uh, uh, pundits will still be stuck at home for a long time. But what will you do if and when, God willing, Donald Trump and his cronies are out? Well, all, all the time since we began, to a large extent, uh, we haven't just been anti-Trump, but we've been anti-GOP. Right. Well, yes. And I actually look forward to a time where I can, you know, sit across the uh, figurative table from uh, friends on the on the on the right and 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 try to beat them over the head with billboards, uh, um, you know, on, on real issues that we disagree about. Uh, whether it's social justice or, um, you know, almost anything else. Uh, so we will continue to, to be there, um, uh, continuing to do that part of, the, of, the, of, our, of our, what we see our job as, which may seem silly, but we, we try to beat people up with billboards, basically, from a, a left-wing point of view. Um, could you just tell us... Um the the way you got from being a photographer, I believe, to a a leftist. Well, I don't want to say leftist. A a liberal messenger messenger of of billboards and uh, other things. Well, the photography was one way of expressing my uh, my experience, my point of view. Um, you know, uh, I had been involved in politics uh, off and on for decades. I, right. A long time ago, I was um, a White House staffer um, in the uh, back in the nineties in the Clinton right. White House. Um, but I spent a lot of years as a as a travel photographer and selling travel photography. Um, when Trump came about, I just felt the need to respond, um, and it just sort of evolved. Um, from photography into a more political, a direct political uh, angle. And that ended up being in the guise of a 14-foot Trump rat, um, uh, billboards, Trump rat boats, uh, um, and now a billboard truck. So those are just some of the things that we have sort of developed. I see. And, and so it's, it's really, you came to this just from personal uh, passion, not really as, a, as an arm of any other democratic or uh, no. political action. No, this is, I'm afraid not. Um, we've, we've gotten a lot of support from a lot of people. We have you know, thousands of people who have thought, you know, I mean, this is sort of a typical... You know, this is how I drink my morning coffee. Oh. Um, you know, it's a, and it's, we, we sell a lot of coffee cups, and we sell a lot of t-shirts, and other kind of more interesting items um, that help express the point of view. Um, and that's, how, to a large degree, that's how we pay for the billboards and all this other stuff. The people who, um, who illuminate neon or, or illuminate uh, like a death tolls on the Trump Hotel in Washington. Is that your group or another group? No, no, it's not. I think they, they do great work. They, uh, there's more than one group that does that. Um, uh, that's sort of a, a, a technique or technology that's been around for, for quite a few years. It's been a, we've seen it all over the country. Um, there is some, I, I don't remember his name. Um, uh, there was a, a like a city paper or an, a local article mm-hmm. on on the fellow who does it, and he has a, a, a team. Um, 
and they've concentrated on the Trump Republic. It, it, that's great work, but it's not it's not us. Do you have a feeling that um, we're so divided into our silos that we're only and I, I mean no disrespect that you're only preaching and selling merch to the choir, or do you feel like this this kind of public art can change minds? Well, you know, I mean, to some degree, it, it is going to be preaching to the to the choir, and, and mm -hmm. we're we're okay with that. You know, it, it, our, a lot the work that we do actually does provide sort of a morale booster yeah. for our side, and, yeah. and, and nothing wrong with it, inducing a little humor bringing a little humor into the equation, I, I think I think it just generally helps, you know, uh, over the long over the long haul. You know, last week when one of the billboard trucks was uh, 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 it went out on the what we used to call the wire services, you know, so literally millions of people um, uh, had a chance to see it. You know, images of it were on German television and television in New Zealand. So, I mean, not that those necessarily help, but when, it, when images are that widely shared. Yes, I think so. Uh, you know, millions of people are at least getting a look at the image, um, including a lot of voters, potentially including a lot of swing voters. Uh, so it's, you know, how much, I think it's a little, uh, I think it helps set the tone um, and itself and, you know, that billboard said loser in big letters with a photo of Trump. And, you know, most people got a kick out of it uh, on yeah. our side. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but even those not on our side, lots and lots of people at least saw the image. What do you make of the voter who says he or she is undecided? Or who's, who thinks that he or she won't vote? Well, there's about seven people who are undecided. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, I, and we both, you know, I think both sides have the list, you know, uh, but it's, it's, it's vanishingly small at this point because, because we are so uh, polarized. Uh, it's about turnout. It's about motivating your side to turn out and organizing your side to turn out and managing that. Uh, and it's about resisting this, the, you know, the suppression that is going to be used against yourself. Right, right. So all of that's in, in play. But, you know, the actual uh, persuadable voter at this point is largely a myth. Ah, interesting, interesting. Okay, let's just pivot a second to Room Raider. How did, how and when did Room Raider start? And it feels like, there's a there's a uh, MSNBC aspect to it, and I oh, say there, that there with is. with great respect. Yeah, no, there there is. I mean, uh, okay, well, uh, my uh, uh, my then girlfriend, now fiance, uh, uh, Jesse Barre, who is in Vancouver, and I um, started Room Raider um, in early April, early to mid April. Um, we are both in lockdown. In the early stages of the quarantine period, and we're both watching a lot of. I'm watching a lot of MSNBC. I sort of work in politics adjacent, mm -hmm. um, and I watch a lot of MSNBC and and CNN. And so we just start talking about people's backgrounds and you know what it looks like and you know, my background. I went to Brown yeah. and I'm from New York. No, no, that's not what that means. <laughs> Right, you know, your, you're right. Your background's an eight, solid eight or nine. You're like Thank right you. in the middle there. Yeah. Uh, like if, if we move that painting over just a little bit, <laughs> so it, you know that's like the only you know that would be it would be a nine. But right now it's like in. You well, know, I, I I'm I'm flattered, you know. but it is a rental so, house. So, so we just we created rate my Skype room, room the room raider account, and we we rate people's rooms on a scale from uh, zero uh, to ten. Um, and, you know, it was kind of off to the races. It, it kind of grew by, it grew into, into, into an unexpected sort of thing. It and is a thing. It's a thing. And, and we just, after five or six months, we, we just got up into uh, 300,000 followers. Wow, Claude. Um, 
but it, uh, um, it's been almost kind of amazing to watch. It's like, wow. I mean, sometimes it, it's really surprising. I mean, it's my, it's, it's my second foray, my second, you know, what I thought was a fairly large <laughs> Twitter account. And, you know, this is, this one is just, it just really took off. And, you know, it's, think- it's fantastic. I, I yeah. want to just say before we get to your five things that a lot of people do very well when they are broadcasting from their kitchens. Very interesting. You know, there is a move to sit in front of your books, but the kitchen work is, is very impressive. Well, you say? I, I think, yeah, I, I think it especially, I think if you have a good kitchen, you, you kind of know you have a good kitchen. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, I'm going with the very, you know, traditional, not that interesting, just, you know, bookcase, you know, if I had a, you know, very nice, you know, brass and marble, you know, thing going on, you know, I custom cabinets, you know, I, I'd probably do it. <laughs> I'd, I'd do a kitchen too. You would. Like, yeah. 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 But, you know, you got to use the room that you think is going to do show you the best. <laughs> okay, Claude, it's been really terrific talking to you. And uh, as, as you know, and I'm, yeah, I'm very proud to say I've been following, I just, I just found you as one does on Twitter years ago. And I've been a constant follower, a, 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 a supporter of your work, a buyer of your merch, and now a room raider um, uh, uh, virgin, no more. And uh, what are your five things? Let's go over that. Because in addition to a sense of humor, you have to think of the things that make life better. Right. I mean, siege. Sure. Um, I'll start with my kids. Um, you know, for one, are, your kids. You know, uh-huh. The kids are, you know, that's why we, you know, I mean, it's got to be about the kids. Um, um, uh, the last two couple of years, I've had I've had a dog that, you know, I'm you know in my mid fifties. Uh, 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 I haven't had a dog uh, who has made an impact on my life for uh, um, since I was a kid, and, and, and so now I have Piper, who's a um, our beagle. So that you know, the kids named her, and um, but she's a she's a big part of it. Um, Wait. So, would you say the kids number one, Piper number two? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Kids, are number, kids are number one, but Piper, Piper is a Piper is a good number two. Um, my friends in general. Number three, uh, your uh, friends. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, I have some very good friends, and I work with a number of them um, on kind of organizing uh, Mad Dog Pack, and um, uh, but then I would say my. And there's a larger group of, of Twitter friends, you know, uh, uh, that I know and work with, and you know, and that's 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 been a big, you know, having a big network of, of, of people that are I don't always know personally, but you know, I've had a very good association with uh, uh, through the platforms, right? Uh, through Twitter, you know, you know, it certainly has had an impact on my life, um, and I, I do have um, inner in her own category, I have a, a, a fiance. Um, who, um, so that's she, she's kind of in her. That's a sort of a separate category. Well, I, I mean, your fiance. Her name is Jesse. Her Jessie name Bob. is Jesse, and is she still in Vancouver? She's still in Vancouver. She's coming down. Um, I'll, uh, we'll have to, we'll have ten days uh, together uh, on the. Uh, starting on October twelfth, right now we're doing ten days every every two months, which is manageable. Not enough. Not it's enough. Manageable for a short period of time. I, I'm I'm hoping that within the next six months we can um, go back. You know, see each I'm other not. with ease. Yes. 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 No. Well, some- it's it's you know what it's a challenge to to be so isolated. It's a challenge to um, really miss our loved ones. And then it's a challenge to watch 
people crowd into the Henderson, Nevada um, rally without masks, knowing that they are going to spread the disease. I sometimes wonder if Donald Trump wants his followers to be dead because well, you know it's it's it become that a way. Death, you know, it's become yeah. a death. You know, Herman Cain was the sacrificial yes, the sacrificial maggot from from <laughs> Tulsa, um, and and now you know so you know choose me, choose me, and so the, the, you know so we'll have we'll have people who die as a result of this, and unfortunately, a lot of the people who die. You know, won't necessarily be the person who was at the rally. It was, you know, That's it was true like, too. It was, it was like the aunt or the grandmother who's living at home who didn't even go to the rally, right? But, but you know, their their son or, or granddaughter or what have you brought the brought the rally back home and infected and infected a, a completely innocent person. Not exactly. that I want anyone to die, but the, don't the want anyone is, to the die. Is, the fact is that, that people will die as a result of the rally in Henderson, just as they will um, as the result of upcoming rallies in, in Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania. People will die, and it's frequently not the people who actually go to the rallies. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, Claude, I hope that you will be um, um, elected out of business, if you know what I mean. But I'm I'm very grateful for your acts of public uh, defiance and public humor, which we need. I think every community needs to see an inflatable Trump rat, uh, tall as a as a uh, two story building. And I've really enjoyed talking to you. Uh, you're a good American. You're a good patriot. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. You've been listening to Five Things That Make Life Better with me, Lisa Birnbach. My guest today has been Claude Taylor, the founder of Mad Dog Pack and Room Raider, co-founder of Room Raider. You can see links to everything we talked about today on my website at lisabirnbach.com. And you can follow Claude Taylor on Twitter, Mad Dog Pack. And we'll have all his details on the website at lisabernbach.com. That was Five Things with Lisa Bernbach. New episodes every Friday, if she remembers.